Hey guys, Port SM. Welcome to part one of our Alpha Models Porsche 911 GT3 video build. So yes, another Alpha Models kit. Yes, I know. I like these kits a lot. I know a few of you out there do as well, so hopefully the majority do. <laughs> and you're not sick of seeing me building these kits. To me, these are kind of a relaxing kit. Um, they're just so straightforward. It's the same build process from 90% of them across the way. They're just a nice, easy build for me. Uh, and with some complex build coming up this year, um, it's a nice step up into getting to those. So I've built a few Porsches before. I've done the GT3 RS a while back from uh, Kitbox. That build's not on ISM, sadly. That's a patron exclusive build. Uh, and this was part of a buddy build with my friend Dan Parent. So I'm going to build this one. We've got a great color recommendation from Andy Callis. We've got some old techniques revisited. One works, one doesn't. And we've got a new glue to test as well, which proves to be very, very good. And we're going to change the way we do our 2K a little bit. And this is the optimal way to use ProScale 2K, which you're going to see in this video today. So without further ado, let's jump in to the build and get started. Incidentally, the review of this kit is also up on the channel as well. So you can go back and have a look at that. So there we go. Let's get on with the build. Okay, so Alpha Models 124 Proche. I think we're going for Porsche. Uh, 992, 911, GT3. I reviewed this uh, a while back, so you can go back and have a proper look through the box. Typical alpha quality, very, very high quality cast resin. Just a few wisps of flash to remove here and there. Literally takes minutes to do. Um, a very, very high quality kit. So this is a buddy build between myself and Dan Parent. Dan started to build one. I thought, you know what, I'll join you. So he's doing the 2016 and I'm doing the later version. So we have got a rear spoiler. Spoiler alert. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, I'm going to opt to leave the spoiler off. Uh, it didn't fit the best. It just would not sit straight for me. And looking at the car, I really like a little ducktail spoiler on the back. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to put leave the spoiler off. So we do. I am preparing here. It does get painted, fully decaled, etc. through the build. But we're not going to use it. Um, let me know what you think at the end of the build when you see the finished product. Should I or shouldn't I have added the spoiler? Personally, while I think it looks good, um, I always like to do something slightly different, but anyway. So yeah, clean all the resin up using a mixture of UMP thinny sponges, thinny sticks, and the thinny buffers. Just to get everything cleaned up. Very, very clean resin though. Literally, what you'll normally get is just a few wisps of resin kind of flash left behind. The body is immaculate. So what we're going to do here is just lightly rescribe the panel lines. Basically, clear out any debris that's in them and just deepen them ever so slightly. So not a huge amount of presser, pressure. I'm using my Holly 0.2 mil scriber here. For me, uh, these are definitely some of the better scribers. Very accurate because your finger's so close to the end. Uh, although I do believe they are discontinued now. So they're getting a bit more difficult to find. So using your scriber of choice, be very careful. You don't want to slip. Resin is very easily marked. It's softer than plastic in places. Uh, so just be very careful and just work your way around. Now, we're not trying to scribe through the body. Uh, I see people scribing body shells, and they're putting way too much pressure on, making it way too deep. I'm just do, doing two or three light swipes till it's all cleaned, and, yeah, just deepen it a touch, and mainly cleaning out any debris that may be in the panel lines. And if you're going to get any on any of these kits, it will be on those panel lines. So just working our way around slowly, just taking our time, Building it up. So, like I say, really clean kit, not a fault on the body anywhere at all. Very, very clean. A far cry away from the 458 Special Ferrari I'm building at the minute from Alpha Models, which is one of their earlier kits and has lots of flaws on it. But you'll see that in the next build series. So, mounting it to my painted tip Bretland Alpha Models holder, which is basically an old bottle, some tongue depressors, some 3M sticky pads. And there we go. There is water in the bottle as well to weight it. As always, at super speed, uh, we're going around with a Tamiya 2000 grit hand sanding sponge. Uh, we're going to lightly key the surface of the model everywhere. And this will put thousands of micro abrasions in the resin and will help our uh, primer and paint adhere. Um, 
resin is not very porous, not like plastic. So I find sometimes you need to do this a bit more. Um, I have had issues in the past, long time ago, with uh, paint lifting off resin. Um, and I believe one of the culprits is, if it's freshly cast resin, uh, the chemicals keep leaching through. So even though we're going to degrease it now with the ProScale pre-paint degreaser, um, this, if it's new resin, will continue leaching uh, its chemicals through, and that's what can cause a problem. So this is a very important step, degreasing. Um, I never used to use a toothbrush, but I do now, and I get in every nook and cranny, every crevice, light cluster, wheel arches, the lot, everywhere, just to remove anything that may contaminate it. Now, this is cast resin. So I'm going to guess they use a release agent on the body. The bodies are very clean. I think the hand finished uh, once they're cast. Uh, but still, this is a step that's well worth doing. Yes, I still have my fingers on it, but we'll sort that at the end. I have to hold it somehow. Uh, we kind of jump back in time here because, um, yes, I haven't put it on the stand yet. I kind of mixed up the order I was doing. Uh, I actually cleaned the body first before scuffing it up like an idiot. So I kind of reversed the footage here to make it look uh, in the right timeline order. Once you've gone over the toothbrush, get a nice clean piece of uh, kitchen paper and just lightly go around, dry it off, get some cotton buds, get all those nooks and crannies. Uh, our cleaner is um, alcohol-based. It will flash off and evaporate away. And then once we've got it mounted back on its stand, we can get a clean piece of tissue with some cleaner on and just give it a final wipe over. Like I say, very important steps these. Number one, the degreasing. Number two, scuffing the body up. And number three, priming. Another very important stage. So we've got Pro Scales White Microfiller Primer. We've got my Iwata HP, uh, sorry, my Iwata Revolution CR3, 0.3 mil needle Iwata. We're about 18 PSI. I'm going to pour three or four coats of primer down. First coat, pretty light. Don't try and cover it, especially with white primer. White is notoriously difficult to spray, uh, and you'll end up with pools of paint. Just get a nice little base coat down, work your way around the body, and by the time you come back, the first coat will have almost dried. So just work your way around systematically, getting in all those nooks and crannies, lots of grills and little vents and what have you on this, so you need to get in from different angles. Um, so just pay attention, get in all around those window frames as well. Just basically get a nice coat of primer everywhere. And I'll sped this up a little bit because otherwise it gets a bit boring. We've got all the ancillary components to do as well. So I have got the spoiler here. We are going to paint the inter spoiler green and do the center carbon, uh, which would look nice, but hey ho, it is what it is. The roll cage we're going to paint in the exterior color, which uh, is going to be lizard green, as are the wing mirrors. Now, I accidentally snapped off one of the mounting points for the wing mirror, the resin mounting points. So I had to drill and put some rod in there later on. Got the door handles as well. Don't forget those, or don't lose them if you're Dan P. Yes, Dan. Yes, it's a shot in the dark at you. Uh, and, of course, the roll cage as well. Seems to be black on most of the GT3s, but I want to be a little bit different, so I thought I'm going to paint it in the body colour. So there we go. Our final coats of primer going down. Make sure you get all those wheel arches as well. All in around those bumpers, all around the grills, the lights, everywhere. Lots of nooks and crannies on these Porsches. So just be systematic, go around until you've got a nice even layer of primer. Now, our primer is a microfiller primer. It will dry with a slight texture. Um, so let it cure for a good five, six hours in a nice room temperature room. Once it's dry, we're going to come back with Tamiya 3000 grit sponge. And you can see how white that primer is. Damn, that is a nice bright white primer. Um, I'm just going to go around. I'm not licking that or anything. I, honestly, I'm not licking that. I'm wiping it on my leg. That's how I clean my sand and sponges. Hannah goes mental. But yeah, that's how I clean them. Um, we're going to go around and scuff all the body up. Now, all we're doing is taking the very top layer of primer off, which is the microfiller part. Um, and what that will leave once sand is, is a beautifully smooth prime surface which is exactly what we want for our next stage, which is paint. So on cars like this, we've got lots of nooks and crannies and bumps and things sticking out. Be very, very careful. There is no pressure being applied here at all. You can see how it's just skimming across the surface. We're just trying to take off the very upper layer of primer. Didn't lick it. And here we are on the spray booth. So we've got Iwata CR3 again, 18 PSI. We've got Pro Scale Paints Lizard Green. Um, this is definitely a car you would always be able to find in the car park. 
A hundred percent. This was a colour recommended by my buddy Andy Callis. He has a neighbour, uh, or somebody who knows has got this colour on their car. And it was like, you've got to do this colour. And I had other colours in mind. But when I looked at the colour, I thought, yep, there we go. Every build I've done, and I'll be completely transparent here, every build I've done um, over the past year has been for Pro Scale Paints. I am looking for colours that pop, that wow people, that look good, and this is definitely one. This car looks phenomenal at the end of the build. It really does. So, nice light thin coats. Our paints do not go on wet at all. I've sped this footage up a little bit. Um, multiple coats is the key here. You don't want to do two heavy coats. You want seven or eight very thin coats. You can see how thin the paint's going down here. It covers really well our paint. It's not over thinned for profit at all. So it covers really well. But we want to build it up nice and slowly. And by doing this, you'll end up with a much nicer, deeper color and a better paint job finish. I am going on off the air at the end of each paint stroke as well. Paint stroke, that's posh, isn't it? Mm. Uh, every paint pass, we should say. Uh, and that way, if we do get any paint on the needle, it's blown off before we go back on the model. And again, we're going to paint all the other components as well. So take your time. Now, resin is a lot easier paint than plastic. Um, some paints can be quite hot, ours less so. Our paints are very mild. They are not over thinned, like I say. Uh, so they're very forgiving. But if you hose lack of paint on, um, you do run the risk of it crazing. So take your time. Like I say, nice light thin coats. Resin's a lot more forgiving because plastic melts, resin doesn't. Uh, but our paints are super forgiving. I've had no problems whatsoever because, like I say, we don't overthin them. Um, they're made for results, not profits. Uh, I know it might be controversial, but that's the viewpoint we've had at Pro Scale from the very beginning. We don't want to overthin them. We just want nice, reliable paints. And you can see nice, light, thin coats, building it up. And of course, every coat of paint you put on the model, put it on the other parts as well. Here we go. This is about eight coats later. And would you look at that color? It looks absolutely phenomenal. Like I say, you are not losing this thing in a car park. You will always be able to find this car. And yeah, definitely one to make you stand out from the crowd. Paint's gone down. Absolutely beautiful. Silky smooth. Great coverage. We've barely used any paint, even though um, we've had so many separate parts to paint. This car's got loads of nooks and crannies and crevices and grills and vents. We've used about three quarters. I don't even think it's that much because I know that color cup's still full. I reckon we've used mm, maybe two thirds of that bowl of paint, which isn't bad at all because if you look at the spray booth filter in the background, that's where most of the paint is. Uh, it goes past as overspray. So, yeah, and it's also on my hand. It looks like I've been doing unsavory things to Kermit the Frog. But anyway, let's move on. Um, so yeah, coverage is going down well. Like I said, I reckon we used about three quarters of the bottle of paint. So you're always guaranteed to get a car out of ours. Uh, every color is different. Colors like this always need more paint because they build up. I've had other paints which use less than a fifth of the bottle. I think the uh, T50 uh, Gordon Murray car is an example of that where I barely used any paint whatsoever. Paint's been drying for several hours. A uh, good couple of hours at least. And we've got some Tamiya enamel panel line wash. We're mixing grey and black to get a nice dark grey colour. Now, this is an enamel-based wash. So, as long as the lacquer paint is fully dried, this shouldn't react at all with the lacquer paint. Uh, now, I did see, I think it was... Oh, I forget the guy's name now. Mark, I think it was, had an issue. I don't know if Mark watches my videos, where he'd used uh, enamel panel line wash like this over... Um, Tamiya paint and it reacted when he wiped it off and basically took the paint off uh, I've never had that happen uh, well I have but only when I picked up Mr. Levin and Thinner by accident and used it to try and get the wash off um, I use Windsor & Newton Sansador which is their odorless mineral spirit it's very mild uh, I know Mark was using Tamiya X20 enamel thinner uh, but I've had no problems with this Windsor & Newton stuff so that is what I tend to use so capillary reaction Let's the wash flow through the panel lines. Just touch it several places. This dries in about 30 minutes. And then we'll wipe it all off. 
and have a nice panel lined vehicle. Now, a lot of people don't like panel line washing. I do. I think it adds a bit of depth to the car. I think if you go for straight black on some colours, it looks a bit odd. This dark grey looks a lot better. While that's drying, we're going to carbon the spoiler. I know I didn't use it. I still have it. And I have toyed with the idea of putting it back on. But I do kind of like the look of this car without the spoiler. It's different. Um, I thought it'd show the process. So just usual decal procedure in place. Water out from underneath and it hits it with UMP decal solutions. While that is uh, working its magic, we're going to get the wash off. So a little bit of Winsor & Newton sensor door on a cotton bud. Wipe off the excess like so. And you'll find that smudges the wash a little bit on the paint. Now, hardly any pressure at all on the paint. Even though the wash doesn't react with the paint, friction can still burn the paint off. So always remember this. Uh, whilst the wash might not react with the lack of paint, you rubbing like hell with a cotton board or kitchen paper can easily just literally sandpaper effect the paint off. Once you've got it off, lightly wipe over some kitchen paper. And as I always say with the Tamiya uh, Tamiya washes, when you think you're all done, put them on the down for five, ten minutes, come back, pick it up, and I'll almost guarantee you'll spot somewhere you've missed. I do it all the time. We've got one of my cheaper pointed cotton buds to get in the little uh, side skirts there. We are going to paint these later on, but I've still given it a wash for now. And I've done it around the windows because it helps with the demarcation of painting the windows later on. And there we go. Beautiful panel line wash, which accentuates all the panel lines. Just having a quick final look around. It's looking good. The paintwork is phenomenal on this. One, this, this car has one of my pet best paint jobs I have ever done. By, by far, you'll see at the end, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Right then, 2K time. So we've got a fresh kitchen paper down. I haven't done the booth because all that paint is nice and dry. We've got my plastic case to the left. We've got the wonderful ProScale Paints 2K set. Now, I'm going to mix more than normal here. I cannot remember the exact ratios. Uh, I have loads of parts to paint um, for the Audi we were building at the same time. So I'm going to 2K those separately. You're not going to see those on this. You'll see those in the Audi video I did uh, last time. So it's a two-to-one mix. So say I've got in there 10 milliliters of ProScale Clear. We then pop in uh, five milliliters of activator. Two to one, two parts clear to one part activator. So get everything out. The pipettes we use, we use for one time only in each bottle. We don't put them back in other bottles. Uh, once they're used, we throw them away and they are never to be used ever again. So as you'll see, we'll put the lid back on this, get it out of the way safe. Use our same pipette to mix everything up. And also we've got a very full medicine cup here. So we're going to take our time mixing it, get that all mixed together thoroughly, and then empty the pipette, throw it away, never to use that again. Now I put that black tile down so I can see the markings on the medicine cup. Now we're going to fit thin the first two coats 5%. So if we have 50 milliliters of combined clear and activator, we've got 0.75 milliliters of thinner. Yes, it sounds complicated. It's really easy to work out, trust me. It's really easy. It's basically two parts clear, one part activator. Wherever that combined mix is, you add 5% thinner. That's it. Really easy to do. We strain our 2K every single time. Throw away that strainer. Throw away those pipettes. Everything is fully mixed. We've got our car, which is looking fabulous. We're going to give it a wipe over with the Tamiya anti-static brush. We've had a good look around to make sure we haven't missed any wash. And then we've got my iWater Revolution CR 0.5. Now, I prefer the 0.5 airbrush uh, for doing 2K. Anything from 0.3 upwards for me is optimal. But the 0.5 Revolution is a fantastic tool for 2K. Now, we're going to apply a nice semi-wet coat of 2K on our first coat. Now, I am double gloved on that left hand. My arm is covered. I've got my scarf full face respirator on. My spray booth is on. Uh, I'm in the room on my own, and I will vacate the room once I am done. You don't want this stuff on your skin. You don't want to breathe it in either. Uh, as long as you follow the safety precautions, you're perfectly safe using this. Uh, no problem whatsoever. So, nice semi-wet coat of 2K on our first coat. We're not even trying to get a full gloss coat. We are literally just applying a nice, even coat of clear along the way. Now... I'm going to show you the full process here, and this will probably be taken out of this build, 
and added to ism as a separate 2k video now i've already done a 2k video in the past um this one we're going to thin it a bit more for the final cut now i've got a little bit of hair just landed on the wing there we go so we'll get that off and what it does is leaves a little mark on the 2k you just hit it again with a light coat of clear and uh, that will self-level and fill itself in yeah, so I'm going to take this out and this will become a separate 2K video how-to because I think thinning the final coat is beneficial to this. It just thins out the 2K, lets itself level a bit, but I'll explain that as I go. So first coat, nice semi-wet coat all around, making sure we get even coats everywhere. Just having a look around using the light. Right, that is put in our box for three to five minutes to let the 2K flash off. We've painted all the other parts as well, the spoiler, the uh, roll cage, the mirrors, etc. at the same time. And we're back again, and we're going to apply another wet coat. So a little bit slower passes this time, but again, we're not trying to get a flawless clear coat with this coat. We're just laying down another nice leather layer of 2K. Now, we're trying to overlap the passes to our previous one, so we always keep that wet edge. As you can see, I angle the car to keep the uh, airbrush as 90 degree to the model as I possibly can. Not always possible, but I always try my best to do it if I can. Now, as you can see, we have got a bit of dust on the bonnet, but we're going to polish all that out later. Getting all those nooks and crannies. Like I say, we're not trying to get a flawless clear coat on our second coat. We're just getting down a nice, even coat. What we'll then do is pop this back in our box for 90 seconds while we thin our 2K a little bit more. And then we'll come back. The 2K will self-level in that 90 seconds or so. And uh, we can come back and have a look and see if and where we need any more. So like I say, the other part is at the same time. Oh, a little bit there I needed. And yeah, in our box. So we pop it in our box. It's got a front-loaded drawer, uh, drop-down drawer, and that stops any dust landing on it. And uh, like I say, with every coat of 2K, we put a coat on all the mirrors, spoiler, roll cage, doors, uh, door handles, etc. There we go. Just remember on the smaller parts, you don't need as much paint. Uh, make sure everything is securely fastened and it isn't going to fall off mid-paint. Because trust me, if you drop this, it's stickier than a stick. It really is. It's unbelievably sticky 2K. Once it starts to go off, it's like uh, the proverbial puto blanket. It is unbelievably sticky. Right, so with everything painted, we pop all that back in that case for 90 seconds or so. While we're doing that, we're going to thin the 2K. So I'm emptying my airbrush and then spraying it dry into the filter. That way we know exactly how much 2K mix we have left. So we pour that into a fresh medicine cup. And the reason I do that is the measurements can't be seen on the old cup because the 2K fills them. Once we work it out, we're going to add 10% thinner to this mix. So if we've got 10 milliliters of clear mix in that right medicine cup, we can add one mil of thinner, which is about roughly what we had left, I think. So we pop that in, give it a good stir up, chuck the pipette away again, get rid of that, and load our airbrush back up. Make sure the airbrush is empty. Load up our airbrush again. And we can go back in for our final coat. So using the light, we can just angle and see where we need. So I would say the whole car just needs another light coat of 2K. Now, because this is thinned a bit more, it's going to flow easier and it's going to self-level better as well. But because it is thinner, you need to be wary of putting down too heavy a coat. So, yes, um, you need to be careful here. But our 2K is unbelievably forgiving. I've not had a single run yet, touch wood, which I am doing right now. So you can push it a lot further than you think it can. And like I say, with this one, we're just going all around. The 2K flows a lot better. Now, I know a few people have thinned it outright this way from the beginning, but I've been testing and trialing this over my last several models, and I think this is the best way to get the best out of this 2K. First two coats the way we recommend, 5% thinner. Last coats with the 10% thinner mix. And like I say, this is my best paint job by far. Uh, the results speak for themselves at the end. And all we want to see now is a glass light 2K. If you can see any flaws in the 2K, any ripples or orange peel, you will more than likely need to put a little bit more 2K down. So don't be afraid to push it because how you leave this 
is how it's going to dry because this is basically how it will dry. It self levels very quick. Once we're happy, pop it back in our case. Be very careful putting things in and out of the case. You don't catch the side of the car. Been there and done that. And of course, we're going to spray the smaller bits as well. Now, be especially careful here because the 2K is thinner again that we don't overspray and get runs on the parts. Just take your time working your way around. And that's it. So, yeah, I definitely think this way uh, works better. The way we recommend, um, and our manufacturer of our 2K recommends, works very well. But I think this is the optimal way to use our 2K. The first two coats with a 5% thinner. Uh, let it flash off for three to five minutes between the first coat. Let it sit for 90 seconds before the third. And thin the third and subsequent coats another 10% afterwards and you will end up with an absolutely beautiful 2k clear coat like this it is absolutely amazing other than a couple of spots of light dust which we'll deal with later it's a flawless paint job and 2k very happy with this one looking good and there we go we're going to leave that there today thank you very much for watching we're back for part two very soon and as always a great thank you to all my patrons whose names are going to flash up at the end of this video